Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, I want to start modeling um, mechanical systems. And um, let's start with a simple example. Let's say we had a box on a plane. Just assume that this ground is flat and assume that this is a box. So we have a box on a plane um, and you apply a force to it. If you apply a force, let's say f of t, we apply a force f of t to the box, then um, we can experience movement. So let's say this represents the, uh, the box. We could track its movement, its displacement now, the x of t. We could track that displacement. Let's say the, um, the box had a mass of m. Now, if you were moving, once you apply a force, you know the Newton laws of motion. Everybody remains in a, in a state of rest or, or moving at a constant velocity unless that external force acts upon it. So once you apply force, it makes sense. We just keep moving. It will accelerate to a certain velocity and then it can move continuously at that velocity until something else causes it to stop. But in your head, you already know that something is going to cause it to stop because heavy boxes on the floor. It's not in space. It's not in a vacuum. So if it's not in, in, the, in a vacuum, it makes some sense that you will have a force acting um, backwards on, it, on this. And that force, in this case, will be called friction. Okay, Friction. Now, for whatever reason, let me call it D. I know that might sound weird. Why D for friction? There's no F, R, whatever. Let's call it D for now. Um, that would be a little apparent in our next ex example. So we'll call it D. Now, um, if we now want to write a mathematical expression to talk about the system. Then we'll say a force is applied on this object. And then, now again, just like you had Kirchhoff's um, voltage law that talks about equilibrium, in mass systems, in mechanical systems, you also have equilibrium. So if we subtract the um, force that is act acting backwards on it, now D actually will not be the friction itself. D is actually a coefficient that talks about how much friction is there. So if we multiply D by the velocity of the object at any point in time, so multiply that by dx dt, that will give us the friction that is acting, up, that is opposing the force at any point in time. But also there's one more thing that we also have to factor in, and that is the fact that this guy has the mass, has an inertia. So inertia will be the mass multiplied by the acceleration of that object. Acceleration is d squared x dt squared. Okay, so this is the inertia. Now, all of this put together, those are all the forces acting on this, assuming there's no other force like wind resistance or gravity. So do apologize, assume this line is perfectly horizontal, so there's no gravitational force um, pulling the object back. Then this will represent the system. And if you're assuming zero initial conditions, taking a Laplace transform of this will simply give you f of s minus s d x of s minus s squared m x of s. Note that this, this all being equal to zero, this here assumes initial con zero initial conditions. So assume zero initial conditions. In other words, what are zero initial conditions? Um, that is equal to zero. And d dt of x, zero initial condition of that also is equal to zero. So assuming zero initial conditions, then this is correct. In which case we could say that the transfer function of the system, the output being the displacement divided by the force, which is your input, is simply given as, 1 over s squared m plus sd okay so i mean you i believe you can see this from that expression let's go on to another example so maybe let me still keep this on the screen let's say that this same we were going to do about the same thing to this system but let's introduce one more variable into this system because if you check the description of this video or the title of this video i said mass spring damper so let's say we have our box on the ground we still have the force acting on it if you don't mind let me place that force on this side here now and i call it f of t and we still have the coefficient of friction acting backwards which is your d and we have the displacement of this um, box going in that direction x of t and you probably have guessed i want to introduce something else which is called a spring 
So I want to introduce a spring. Let's say that this box is hooked up to the wall by, by means of a spring, and the spring has a spring constant k. So the spring has a constant k, there's a coefficient of, of friction g, and then the box has a mass m. So if this is the case, again, we write our sum of forces. The way to go really with this kind of systems is to write your sum of forces and equate that to zero. So look at the point of equilibrium. At equilibrium, you have that the um, force acting on the object minus m dx squared, that's the inertia, d squared x dt squared, minus the friction, that's d dx dt. And then if you remember well, the force that is exerted by a spring is the spring constant multiplied by your displacements. Simply spring constant multiplied by the displacement. Sum all, all of this together, you get zero. Again, you could find the Laplace transform of this. Laplace transform of this and moving sometimes to the right hand side gives us m s squared m minus s d minus, sorry, I've moved them to the right hand side. So this should now be positive plus s d plus k. And from this, we can come up, oh, I've left out one thing, which is my x, x of s. And now I can come up with the transfer function of this new system. And the transfer function of this new system, x of s, where x is your output, divided by f of s, will be given as, well, well, we have obtained it as 1 over s squared m plus sd plus k. In other words, this system can simply be represented by a single block in a block diagram, where the output will be x of s, and your input will be f, the force that is applied of s. And the transfer function of the block is given by 1 over s squared m plus sd plus k. Okay, so uh, that is our um, differential equation model, sorry, the well, differential equation model and then the Laplace, the transfer function model of the system. Once again, what did we assume over here? We assumed initial, zero initial conditions. Assume zero initial conditions. To get the transfer function, we must assume zero initial INI shell conditions. If your initial conditions are not zero, you cannot have the transfer function this way. Why can't we have the transfer function this way? Let's assume your initial condition was not zero. Okay, so let's assume, let me draw a line here so we know we're doing something new. Let's assume that instead we're given that x of 0 minus is equal to 1. In other words, displacement was originally 1. And let's say there was an initial velocity, x dot, I'm using that to represent the differential. Let's say there was an initial velocity of, eh, let's make it 1 as well, make life a little easy for us. Now, if that had been the case, then we, if this is our differential equation model, to find the Laplace transform, Laplace, Laplace transform would have been f of s um, minus m into parenthesis s squared x of s minus s x of 0 minus x dot 0 minus, close that parenthesis, plus d into s x of s that what i did here was i brought the constant out and then found the laplace transform of this second differential same thing brought this constant out finding laplace transform of the first differential s s s x of x s x of s minus x of zero initial conditions close that parenthesis and we're left with kx minus k x of s is equal to zero Again, we could collect like terms, we could slot in our parameters and move the these ones to the right hand side. Sorry, this should be negative, not positive, because our equation had it as negative. Okay, so this should be minus d. Okay, so we could take all of this to the right hand side. That tells me that f of s is equal to um, then I'll collect the x of s terms as well in one soup. So we have x of s multiplied by s squared m 
um, plus SD plus K, which is fine. That's what we had before. But now we still have our initial conditions to reckon with. So this ones will now give us minus S M X naught. So we have minus S M X of zero. We have this term here minus m x dot of zero initial conditions first um, first different of the first differential and then we have this here minus d x of zero minus initial conditions so let's um, go to the next step we have our f of s being equal to x of s into s squared m plus s d plus k minus we said x of zero we're given x of zero as one slot that in here that tells me minus s m minus m of this also gives me minus m and then minus d now is it possible to arrive at a transfer function remember transfer function says x of s divided by f of s is it possible to arrive at this from this expression the answer is no because this term here does not have an x of s in it and does not have an f in it so this is a constant okay this is a constant and i mean it's dependent on s but it's a constant um or it, it's not it's not it's not dependent on each of these uh, pardon the noise in my background it's not dependent on x or f in other words we cannot factorize it out that way and we cannot arrive at a transfer function so it's not possible to arrive at a transfer function when you have non-zero initial conditions i mean you could talk and make one of these zero and make the other non-zero and check you see that you still will not be able to so for example let's just try that out if your x dot had been x dot of zero had been zero if that had been zero then this term here would have been zero so let me change this if this one had been zero let's assume your x dot of zero had been zero and this was still one then that would have made this term equal to zero but you will still have this term and this term in other words you would have still had this term and this term in other words we still couldn't find the transfer function let's try um, the other possibility let's say that okay no this is not what happened let's say that instead we had had that your um, x of zero was equal to zero whereas this was still one if that had been the case, then this would have been equal to zero and this would have been equal to zero, but this term would have still remained, in which case this would have remained, whereas this would have been zero, this would have been zero. So we see that as long as you don't have all your initial conditions being equal to zero, it is not possible to find the transfer function of the system. And I'm not saying it is impossible to model the system and work with the system. We already have a differential equation model, and there is another model we can work with, which is called the state space model, and that does not require um, zero initial conditions. But for the transfer function model, we always want zero initial conditions. See you in the next video.